I want to talk about a comment someone left me on YouTube. Sam Palman asked, how would you go about using reference tracks without comparing yourself to the artist in question? Every time I use reference tracks, I immediately notice all the flaws in my work. It's pretty disheartening. How do you tap into yourself to keep moving forward on a positive level? How many of you guys can relate to that? You listen to a song that you like the mix of on Spotify. You put on that song. You listen to your song and it doesn't measure up. And you feel bad about yourself. I'm sure that somebody in here can relate to that. You guys might or might not like my answer. Because I'm going to be tough with this answer. Learning is not comfortable. If you listen to a reference track and it makes you feel like shit about your track, that's a good thing. If you're trying to improve and you're listening to a reference track and you want to get your track to the level of that reference track, if that makes you feel bad, good. Use that energy to improve. That is the way you get better when you realize that you're just not at that point yet. That means practice, practice, practice. Because guess what? Your next mix is going to get a little closer. Your next mix is going to get a little closer. Your next mix is going to get a little closer. If you feel like too bad, try harder. Try again. Do it again. And you know what? In a couple months, a couple weeks, whatever it is, you're going to keep getting better. Focus on getting your mix to that level. When I was starting out, one of my favorite albums was Dr. Dre's Chronic 2001. The music, vocals, the mixes, all of it was so good. But especially the mixes. The mixes on that album at the time for that style were f flawless. That was my benchmark. And do you think at first my stuff was sounding like Dr. Dre? Hell no. Dr. Dre's a master. It took me a long time to understand how he levels his kicks, how he levels his bass, how his drums hit, all those things. I had to study that sound in order to get mine even close on a mix level to Chronic 2001. It's a process. It's a learning process. And feeling bad is not a bad thing. That means that there's a gap in between where you are and where you want to be. Use that energy of how you feel to advance yourself forward and to get closer to that sound you want. It's okay to not be good, especially if you're trying to get better. Yeah, totally lifted. I've learned so much from referencing my track to something better than mine. A hundred percent. You know, this is another cheat code. When you're trying to get better, only listen to the music that inspires you to be better. Don't listen to the music that everyone's listening to if you're not feeling it. If you're feeling it, listen to it. If you're not, just don't. With that said, I like to understand the kind of music that's coming out now and pay homage to it. But it doesn't always mean I want to bombard my brain with that music. So I just start creating carbon copies of what's already out there. You want to understand what's happening in music now. You want to be in tune with it. But listen to the music that really inspires you. Listen to the music that you resonate with. Because that's how you're going to start to sound. You're going to kind of have influences from what you listen to. Kroniak, 100%. I feel like that's the point of using the reference. Identifying your weak spots. Having a reference track is going to show you where you need to improve. Yeah, Silas, same with me. Isn't that kind of the point to A, B, the flaws? I never feel discouraged. I feel insanely inspired to get that good. That's the way it's always been for me. I've never used it as a way to beat myself up. It's always been listening to a reference track. If yours isn't there, well, guess what? Now you have a roadmap. How do those kicks sound compared to mine? Oh, they use a different kick sample. Maybe I can find a kick sample that is a little closer to that because I like the way that kick knocked. I remember when I went to the club back in like 2004, there was this song called Clap Back by Ja Rule, produced by Scott Storch. And I remember the way that hit in the club. Holy shit, that kick drum was huge. And I was like, this is the best sounding song in the club. And then I went home. I was like, what is it about that kick drum that sounds so good in the club? And I just studied it. Things like that make you a better producer. Things like that make you a better mixer. So it was my experience being in the club. And I was like, yo, this song hits different. Clap Back by Ja Rule. At the time, this was like 2004, that kick just slapped. What made that slap is just the sub frequencies in it. But it also has like a nice mid range. And what's interesting is there's not much melody happening in the track. So it's mostly that kick taking up all the space. One thing I found a trick with drums is... 
if you don't have too much melodic stuff going on, the drums can really shine through and you can make that shit slap harder than anything. If you want, go ahead and listen to the track. It's up on YouTube, Spotify or whatever. That particular kick, I remember back then, that's when I started realizing the power of like going to clubs, listening to music in cars, just listening on different sources because that made the whole entire club feel like it was lifting off the ground. 